Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome back to The Conversation. Do you know that you have the distinction right now as you're listening to be listening to the 100th episode of this podcast? Oh, gosh, I never expected this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh my gosh. Calm, calm down. Calm down. Oh, wow. I, I love that. Thank you. Now, <laughs> the topic of this episode is celebrating your wins, the art of celebration. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. Originally, I had a different topic in mind for the 100th episode, and my wife suggested, why don't you talk about the art of celebration and celebrate your 100th episode? And you know, at first, I balked at the idea Sure, I think it's worthwhile, but I wasn't going to really talk about celebration. And herein lies the problem with most people. And I'm talking about you too, specifically you. You don't celebrate your small wins. And if we're truthful, you sometimes don't even celebrate your big wins. And frankly, you know, I wasn't even going to make this a big deal for myself. Well, why not? Well, because in my mind, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm in this for at least another three, four, five years. And over the next five years, I'm looking at at least another 400 episodes. So just hitting 100 didn't seem like that big a deal, you know, in the scheme of things. But I have to bow to the wisdom of my wife. And that's drawing my attention to the power of celebrating small wins. Celebrating in general. And when I say this, I'm not talking about other people celebrating you. See, I believe that you need to be self-validating. So I want you to start looking at your life, looking at your actions, your behavior, and start celebrating small wins yourself. You should be proud of yourself. Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you be happy and celebrate the milestones that you've reached throughout your life? And I can hear your response. It used to be my response. Why should I draw attention to things that I should and could be doing? Shouldn't I actually be waiting to celebrate when everything is right, when I do a really, really good job? Something deserving of celebration? Well, we're going to explore this. Now, this act of celebrating, you celebrating yourself, flies in the face of the whole belief, that underlying belief that a lot of people have, me included from time to time, is I'm not enough. And how that belief starts, it starts really, really young. Let's pretend that when you were three years old, you cleaned your room and you run out in the living room and said, mommy, 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 I cleaned my room. And she's all excited and then walks in your room and looks around and sees toys all over and your bed not completely made. And she said, this isn't clean or something to that effect. And here you were so proud of yourself for cleaning your room, at least making an attempt. You know, (laughs) you're only three, but... The critical eye could see there was this out of place and that out of place and you didn't make the bed. The corners were turned down and she wanted you to do a good job. So she was pointing out the things that you could improve on. But what you were left with was I wasn't enough. I wasn't good enough. Fast forward four years and you bring your report card home or a paper with a B plus on it or an A. And you say, Mommy, Daddy, look at this. I got an A on my report. And they say, that's fantastic. And if you keep applying yourself in every class, just think about how good you could do. And you're left with, I tried really, really hard. I got an A on this report. And it still wasn't enough. And who knows, maybe it's doing the dishes or sweeping the floor or some other thing in your life 
that once you did it, you still were criticized. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't, didn't meet the, meet the criteria. Now, this is the interesting thing about the brain. It doesn't take a hundred examples of being criticized or being a, having it being pointed out that you weren't enough or weren't perfect enough. It only takes three to five events for the brain to take notice and say, oh, there's a pattern here and then generalize and predict out in the future. If you were to do something similar, chances are it won't be good enough. And when you reflect back on your childhood, it will appear or it will seem as if to you, as if you were criticized over and over and over again. That will be the evidence that you have that supports the belief that I'm not enough. And then sadly, any small win, any achievement that you get, that you show up, where you excel, where it was wonderful, will be discounted by you because it doesn't fit the narrative, I'm not enough. It will be played down because it doesn't fit the belief. And my friend, that's why you don't celebrate. That's why I don't necessarily celebrate all the time. It has become a practice for me to celebrate, sometimes for no good reason. Well, the good news is that, remember back, it only takes three to five events before your brain starts to generalize and predict into the future how things will be. Well, that can work for you as well as against you. When you start celebrating your wins, it only takes about a half a dozen times of celebrating your wins for you to start circumventing that belief, I'm not enough. Now, I have to admit, when I first started doing this, it was a bit difficult because, again, my default was to discount those small wins. For example, you may have heard me talk about the first time I walked on hot coals. It was back in 1988. It was January 31st. I'm, I'm barefoot on the pavement in Dearborn, Michigan, getting ready to walk across burning hot coals. And I psyched myself up. But once I started walking, I was told when to walk. And once I started taking the first step and walking on the coals, I felt nothing. And I got to the other side and I celebrated. But I had this, this feeling like I didn't actually do anything phenomenal. And while it felt good that night, over the next few days, I began discounting and tearing apart the entire experience. I would say things like, well, they took the coals from another place and they put them over on this bed in front of me and they cooled down. It wasn't really, really hot. The truth of the matter, which I didn't realize like two, three years later, was that my mind was so powerful and I was so scared at the time, it blocked out the entire experience. I felt nothing from the knees down. And once I realized the power of my mind and the capabilities that lie within me, it actually elevated that first experience. Now, I've walked on fire almost 600 times since then because I knew that there was something in the experience. But that story's for another podcast. The point is that first time I discounted the experience, I could have celebrated. It could have been phenomenal that night and the next night and the week after. But I downplayed it. It wasn't that big a deal. So moving forward with the art of celebration... These are the steps I want you to take for yourself. And if you have children, you can begin using these with them to where you don't, by mistake, implant the idea in their mind that they're not enough. Condition number one is that you do not wait for perfection before you celebrate. You acknowledge and you call out and celebrate. You mark out in your experience just leaning in the right direction getting things approximately right. Said another way, you're not celebrating perfection, you're celebrating progress. The idea that momentum is being generated. For example, think of when you were learning how to walk. You didn't get it right the first time. You didn't pull yourself up off the floor from a crawl and then start walking around the house or running to, from room to room. No, you let go of the couch or whatever you pulled yourself up on, and more than likely, you fell on your dupa. But 
Uncle Harry wasn't sitting in the corner saying, that kid will never walk. That kid can't even stand on their own two feet. No, it was celebrated. Look, look at you. They stood up, they stood up, look at that. And encouraged, you pulled yourself up again. And before you know it, you were standing there with no hands, no hands on the couch, no hands on the table, like just standing on your own two feet. And then when you took your first step, oh my God, you thought the, you just landed on the moon. He took his first step. She's, she's walking. She's walking. Yet sadly, you don't remember that. You've, you've seen kids walk. You probably have had kids learning how to walk. And you celebrated every step, every movement, that leaning in the right direction. And my friend, that's the attitude that I want you to take with yourself. You just lean in the right direction. I celebrated the, my first podcast episode that I got out. And all that was is, a, you know, coming attractions. This is the idea that I have for this podcast. And then I celebrated the first 50 downloads. It's like, all right, 50 people are listening. It's awesome. Look what I did. It felt good and affirming to know that somebody was listening. I wasn't just talking to myself in my office. And then I acknowledged myself for the first 500 downloads, the first 1,000 downloads, the first 5,000 downloads, then 10,000 and 20,000. I was getting excited. People were listening. And today we're just shy of 50,000 downloads. But, you know, when I look at it, it doesn't mean as much to me because my real goal is to make an impact. And I've yet to figure out exactly how to measure that But in my mind, if people are still downloading the episodes, still listening, we have new listeners coming on board and they stay and hang around, then they must like the content. The content must be making a difference. So I need to have faith in that. Even though there's podcasts with a lot more downloads, there's still a lot more podcasts with fewer downloads. And while I'm not leading the pack, I am leaning in the right direction. And that's something I can celebrate. I just recently had a friend of mine who also started a podcast about a year ago. She announced to me that she had just achieved 5,000 total downloads since she started. Now, I didn't say how many downloads I had. I just applauded her and said, you should be proud of yourself. Look what you've accomplished. And that's the second condition in celebrating is that you should be proud of yourself. And if you have kids, rather than you saying, I'm so proud of you, say, you should be proud of yourself. Look what you did. Look what you accomplished. That way you don't make them dependent upon outside validation. And as far as yourself goes, like for me, if I was to say, you should be proud of yourself, Daniel, look what you did. It's in the understanding that each and every one of us is on the cutting edge of our own discoveries, on the cutting edge of our transformation. And then condition three, which is the hard part, is make a big deal out of it. Make a fuss over yourself. Do a little happy dance. And the fourth condition in celebrating is mark out time every week, the same night, same day, and reflect back on the previous week. What events, what things are you most proud of? What things could you celebrate if you were to celebrate? An acquaintance and a fellow coach of mine, uh, Chloe Saffron Gibson, has what she calls orgasmic Fridays. So every Friday is the climax of her week, and so she takes an account and celebrates every win, all the small wins that occurred over the week. She puts on her music and begins dancing around the house. She likes to embody, like bring the joy, bring the, the celebration into her body and expresses it out into the world. Another way to do this is to do it at the end of the night. As just before you go to bed, reflect back over the day. What were you most proud of? What were the, the standout moments? And then celebrate those just before you fall asleep. And reinforce for yourself, you did it. You're making progress. You have built momentum. And then as you fall asleep, this idea will be reinforced into your subconscious. And then if you have children, you can ask them at the end of the day, maybe at dinner, after an event, what was your favorite part? What stood out to you? Was there anything that you did or how you were being in the day that you can be proud of? 
you're basically asking them to sort through all their experience for those standout moments, the moments that they love, the moments that they appreciate, the moments that they can be proud of. When you walk your children through this process, you're actually installing a mental strategy in how to perceive the events of the world in a way where it serves them rather than defeats them. And this works the same way for you. You sort through your day, sort through your past week for those moments that stood out that you can be proud of. And you know what? You won't be waiting until the end of the day before you acknowledge yourself. When it happens, you'll say, oh my God, I love this. And you'll feel proud in that moment. You don't need to reflect back on it later. You're in the moment. You're present to what's going on and how you're showing up for life. So let me talk again about the benefits of celebrating. One is you begin to erode away that belief that I'm not enough. Every time you affirm an achievement, a milestone, a benchmark, you reinforce the idea that you're making progress. You're handling things. My God, you're enough. And doesn't that feel good? Absolutely, it does. Now, this also works with installing new patterns, new habits. Reward yourself for making approximately right movements, leaning in the right direction, building momentum. You see, whenever you begin something new, if you, or your children are beginning something new, or if you have employees, you reward approximate right behavior. When they're leaning in the right direction, you're reinforcing this positive momentum, you're reinforcing the action habit. And every time you reward yourself, every time you acknowledge and have a small celebration, you're releasing dopamine and serotonin and endorphins, these feel-good neurochemicals that you produce in your body. And that, my friend, reinforces good behavior, reinforces the actions that you are proud of. And I guess I need to tell you, if, I haven't, if you haven't already guessed, lower the bar, lower the threshold on when you deserve to celebrate. This whole idea of deservability lies in struggle, lies in effort. Like, it's only worthwhile, it's only, you can only celebrate if you've really worked hard. No, celebrate the little checkpoints, celebrate the little milestones, celebrate each and every step that you take on your way to fulfilling your intention. Now, I know that your critical mind is saying, but then I won't try as hard, or I won't be compelled to do a good job. My standard of excellence will be lowered. Well, that, my friend, is dysfunctional thinking. It's actually abusive to yourself and your children. And I'm sorry, your parents probably treated you that way too. Mine did, but they loved me. They thought they were doing the best thing for me by criticizing my actions. Then there's this other weird belief that if we're too generous with our praise, if we celebrate all these little things, won't we become full of ourselves, braggadocious, narcissistic? Well, the truth is that holding back praise, holding back love and affection, being unwilling to celebrate, that's what actually creates narcissistic behavior or braggarts. You know, those people that say, hey, look how amazing I am. Tell me, agree with me, how amazing I am. Because they never came to a point where they could celebrate themselves. And frankly, this is a serious problem I see in our culture, around the world, that people cannot validate themselves. They're always seeking outside validation, outside approval, only because you never learned how to pat yourself on the back. The other point I want to make is this whole practice of celebration feels good. It feels good. And we have the, I don't know why we're so opposed to making ourselves feel good. That reluctance is actually one of the things that gets in the way of manifesting the world you want, the reality that you want, is because you're not invested in making yourself feel good. And lastly, the big benefit in celebrating your accomplishments, no matter how small, is that you become present to your life. What does that mean? Well, you may have the experience that as you get older, the days kind of run together. 
time seems to slip right by you. And when you mark it out and celebrate these little events, no matter how small, you become present to your life. It's an interruption to the ordinary, the pull of the mundane and the ordinary. You see, when you don't celebrate yourself, when you don't celebrate your wins, every day seems to run into the next. Your life will never be the epic adventure. Why? Because you're not treating it like it's epic. Well, you might be wondering, how do I celebrate? If you're not in the practice of celebrating, I like to celebrate with my favorite meal. Sometimes my wife and I will sit down and we'll celebrate with a bottle of wine. Now, we just don't sit down and pour a couple glasses. We light the candle. We get the good glasses out. We make a production out of it. We toast each other. Another way to celebrate yourself is to give yourself a day off. Like, do nothing. Put the phone away. Sleep if you want. In fact, I think that's the one I'm going to use for myself. When hitting my 100th episode is I'm going to take Friday off. I'm not going to do anything. I might take a walk outside in nature. I'm going to be indulgent with myself. I'm going to celebrate the fact that I've had a good 100 episodes. Then after I celebrate the next day, I'll look forward to the next year. I'll look forward to the next 150 episodes. What's important when you celebrate is to make sure that it's healthy for the most part. You don't necessarily want to always reward yourself with food because that can become problematic, nor alcohol or drink. But from time to time, it's acceptable. You're an adult. But in that vein, my suggestion is, is that you vary the reward. Other things you can do, healthy things you can do, uh, for instance, you can take a nice hot bath, nice relaxing bath, take a nap, treat yourself to a massage, go on a picnic, take yourself to the park, hang out with the birds, or like Chloe does, put on your favorite music and dance around the room. Something else I like to do is I like to take myself to the museum and with no, with no time limit. I like to meander. I like to look and sit and, and go here and, and learn about the different artists and look at the different styles. And you can probably come up with your own ideas. Basically look at anything you've been denying yourself until you earn it or you deserve it. And that's how you celebrate. The focus of this episode is you celebrating yourself, you celebrating your own small wins, even your big wins. The bigger the win, the bigger the celebration, from my point of view. But I also feel that we need to celebrate the people in our lives, the people that make a difference for us. And I'm going to approach that in another podcast episode. I just Today, I just want to honor you. And my friend, you should be proud of yourself. Until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel DeNovi, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner directed while you're engaged in the epic adventure. Celebrate your life.